Hey, what's going on, Cloud Scholars? Hope everyone out there is having a great day. My name is Kieran Tross. I want to thank you for watching this video and continue with the Master Octa course. So if you clicked on this video, you probably want to figure out sign-on policies within Octa. Um, I have a ton of videos so far with the uh, Master in Octa. I would suggest that you watch some of the other videos as well. But if not, you can watch this video because I'm going to go through a bunch of different things. So... Um, I say this all the time. I am not going to PowerPoint you to death. I just want to kind of drive a point, talk about it, and then we'll get in front of the Octa portal. So uh, sign-on policies, the different type of sign-on policies in Octa. So Octa sign-on policies and rules provide a secure and flexible way to control how users authenticate and sign into their accounts. Password policies, Octa sign-on policies, and app-specific application sign-on policies can be configured. So you have app sign-on policies, you have Octa sign-on policies, and you also have password policies. So let's talk a little bit about app sign-on policies. So app sign-on policies allow or restrict access to applications. By default, all client options in the app sign-on rule dialogs are pre-selected. To configure more granular access to the app, selective apply conditions as you create one or more prioritized rules based on who a user is or which group they belong to, whether they are on or off the network, the type of client running on their device, the platform of their mobile or the desktop device, or whether their devices are trusted. Policies are used by Octa to control rules and settings that govern, among other things, user session timing, li lifetime, excuse me, whether multi-factor authentication is required when logging in, uh, what MFA factors may be employed, password complexity requirements, what type of self-service operations are permitted under various circumstances, and what identity provided to route users to. Policies have rules applied to them which determine whether they're applicable to a particular users at particular time. Policies generally consist of large elements that can be applied to many users, such as minimum password length. So you have something called group password policies, which you know with password policies can enable admins to enforce password settings at the group and authentication provider level. Okta provides a default pass policy to enforce the use of strong passwords to better protect your organization assets. You can create policies that are less or more restrictive and apply them to based, uh, users based on group membership. With group password policies, you can define password policies and associate rules to enforce password settings on the group. Uh, create multiple policies with more or less restrictive rules and apply them to different groups or use policies to enforce the use of strong passwords to better protect your organization's assets. All right, so let's get to a fun part of the video. So now we're back in front of the Okta page. And what we're going to do is the first thing I want to do is I want to go to applications because we were talking about the different type of policies out there. And one of the policies that are out there was for application, right? Your app sign on policy. So if we go to the application, we can click on a specific app, Okta admin console. If we click on sign on, Now here within our uh, app, you can see that we have these different roles. So this is one of the sign on policies, right? So right here, if we wanted to add a rule, we can, or we can just edit the rule that we have here. So this is a sign on policy for the app. Um, and it's pretty much the same for some of the other stuff as well. So I'm just gonna, I just wanna show you exactly where that would be for that one. Um, I'm gonna come back here, the authentication policies. And over here, you can see the same one, Okta Admin Console as well. But what I want to do is I want to configure an Okta sign-on policy, right? But this one's going to be specific to um, a particular group. So I'm going to say add a policy, and I'm going to say contractors policy. Like stay with the same thing we were doing before. And here we have our contract as policy. Now, by default, it'll, it'll create a rule for you. Uh, you can add another rule if you want to. Um, but right over here, what we're going to do is we're going to edit this rule. So it's a uh, rule name is going to be uh, catch all, right? That's the default one. Um, if we want to go into it ourselves, we can come here and we can add a rule and we could call our own rule. So we'll say contractors rule. And we're here, we're gonna say if user type, and you, we went over user type before, so we can have one of the following user types, uh, user or auth user, um, or we can just do it for um, 
we could do it for any group, right? So we can leave this to any user type because we're worried about our group. And user group includes, and this is where we can say contractors. Right here. And none of the following groups, right? Um, you could do that as well. And user is any user and the device platform is any platform. We can do that or we can filter it out. We don't know where our contracts are coming from, so we say any platform. Now, one thing I wanna tell you that this is an and statement. So all these conditions have to be met. It's not if and or, right? It's an and statement. So all of these conditions have to be met. And users IP, this is very important. Right here, we have in any network zone defined in Okta, in any of the following zones, not in any uh, network zone. So basically what this is doing is, and I, we haven't gone through any networks yet and talked about that section, um, but what this is saying is if you're coming from a specific IP address, then I, you are allowed to do this. If you're not coming from a specific IP address, then you're not allowed to do this. And I'm gonna go into more detail about that network section uh, in another video, but that is essentially what this is saying. So then it says, and user's IP is, and this is, and risk is, if it's anything from low, medium, high, we'll leave it as any. And the following custom expressions is true, we can leave that um, empty as well. Then access is denied or allowed, right? So right here, we have user type, at least one of the following groups, contractors, and user platform, fine. And then we can say allowed. But then what do we want them to do? We want them to do password plus slash IDP and another factor or any two factor types. We can do any two factor types. And then over here and the possession factor constraints are, we can say fission resistant, hardware protected. But let me come back up here. I'm gonna go say password, right? Let me see if I get any warnings. It didn't give me any warnings right now. We're gonna come out of here, but I'm gonna come back into this, right? So we're leaving it as password IDP. Your org's authentication that satisfy these requirements, password, and it says, um, we're fine, prompt for every time user signed into resource, when it's been over a specified time since the user signed in, and I can say what time, so we can say um, time since last sign, we can say two hours, when Okta global session doesn't exist, we can use that. If the global session exists, allow the user to authenticate silently through SSO, but we can say, um, every time somebody signs in. So I'm gonna make this more restrictive, but I, right now I'm gonna say time since sign in uh, two hours, right? So this is when it's been over a specified length of time since the user signed into any resource protected by the Okta global session. So I'm gonna say time since sign in, I'll leave it as two hours and I'll click save. I wanna see if it gives any warning messages. So it doesn't give us any warning messages as of now. I'm gonna come back to this authentication. I know that this one definitely did. Let's see. Okay, now in here, what you can see is this author strongly recommends that you protect this app with MFA. Edit the rules to require authentication with any two factors. So it says catch all rules. So edit the rules to require authentication with any two factors. So right here is talking about not this one, but it's catch all rule. So if I say edit and I come down here, it says allow when MFA console increases. So right here it says it wants any two factor types you see right here now it's not doing anything anymore so if i say any two factor types require user interaction require a pin or biometric i can say fisher resistant there are no factors set up or org that's required that meets that requirement so i could take that off and i can click on save and then that'll be that but this is only for testing purposes but i'm letting you know exactly what that error message was referring to so i'll cancel it i don't mind that warning I'll leave it that the way that is, right? So let me come back over here. Uh, we are looking for contractors policy. Okay, good. So here in contractors policy, what we wanna do is, I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna click edit, that catch all rule. And down here, um, what we have for ours, we're not getting anything because we have two factor, right? So um, that's the reason why we're not getting anything here. We're fine, but we wanna make sure they sign in every single time. So I'm gonna click on save. And then that's pretty much it. That's how you would go about doing the contractors. Okay, so now that we've created the contractors policy, what we can do is we have an option to come up here and we can do is we can do a uh, clone policy. 
So policy clone successfully. And when you clone a policy, what happens is it could come up here. It's going to come up here. It's going to have cloned in front of it. So you have the option to come up here and edit name and we can change it. And let's just say we wanted to do something for, um, I don't know, Mark, uh, let's go, um, marketing policy, but we like some of the stuff that's in this policy, but we don't want to keep everything the same. So now this is our marketing. <laughs> excuse me, it's our mark marketing policy. And what we can do is we can make some changes on this one and we can take out this and we can say marketing. Do we have a marketing group? Oh, we don't have a marketing group. Uh, let's see, we have a help desk group. Okay, we really don't want to apply this to the help desk group, but you get what I'm saying. You can now change it and you can apply it to a different group or we can do it to a different user type. So we could say, all right, we could take this out. We don't want to do group. We can do a different user type and we could do it our authors, users. Um, and then down here, uh, we could do any group if we wanted to or any other group. Do we have an authors group? I'm not sure if I created an authors group. All right, I guess we don't have an authors group, but we can now change this and we say we like it. Um, and we can say any group, but we want to do it to a different user type and we can do it to this type of user. Um, I'm just showing you the different flexibility that you have. And then once you click save. And then that's that. And then now you have two policies and you have a policy for contracts and you have a policy for marketing and you can make those uh, modifications. All right, so this video has been going on for a bit of time. Um, what I wanna do is I wanna cut it short right now. Um, I wanna thank you all for watching. In the next video, I'm gonna go through password policies, right? So, so we talked a little bit about the other policies. So I want to go through the password policies because we talked about that in the very beginning of this video. So in the next video, we're going to go through password policies. So I want to thank you for watching this video. Um, if you're going through this master octa course, please do take breaks because your brain needs a break and you're learning all this stuff. There's a lot of information being thrown at you. So please take a break, go use the bathroom, and then come back and continue watching the video. So I want to thank you all for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button as always. And you know my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and, of course, consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.